monetizing digital services since 2004, boosting the entertainment industry by making digital content accessible for everyone. AWG, where innovation meets monetization. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development, where we share original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We hope you join us often for practitioner-oriented content around all things related to leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. You enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page, and please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Tony Smith about preventing burnout in industries with high turnover rates. Tony Smith, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Ah, thank you, Jonathan. It's great to be with you. Yeah, it's great to be with you too. You're joining us from Southern California. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. And today we're going to be talking about preventing burnout in industries with high turnover rates. Now you're specifically within the restaurant industry, so we'll be zooming in on that. But we'll also be talking about these issues more generally as well. As we get started, I wanted to share Tony's bio with everybody. Tony Smith is co-founder and CEO of Restaurant 365, the world's only all-in-one cloud-based restaurant-specific accounting, back office, and reporting solution. He earned his bachelor's degree in business management and information systems from Brigham Young University. After earning his degree, he joined John Moody and Morgan Harris as director of services at Dynamic Methods, a consulting company that assesses business issues, especially accounting needs that can be solved with a software as a service. After dissecting the restaurant industry, he worked with Dynamic Methods, uh, and that led him to co-found Restaurant 365 in partnership with Moody and Harris, where product direction and strategy has been his main focus. He has a passion for trying out new restaurants, spending time with his family, singing, and watching college football. I love all of that. And we were just chatting in the pre-interview, getting to know each other a little bit. Um, it turns out like we were at BYU at the exact same time. We graduated the same year. We probably crossed paths, though we never knew each other. Um, so it is a small world indeed. It's a pleasure to reconnect and, and to have a chance to chat with you today. Uh, anything else you would like to share with me or my audience by way of your background or personal context before we dive on in? Um, no, that was pretty thorough. I do think it's funny that we were crossing paths at the same time in college. Little would you think that 20 years later, right, then you would cross paths again in a totally different way. And I think 20 years later, now that I said that out loud, makes me feel super old. <laughs> I know. I, I just had another birthday. And so like, I'm just feeling it. Um, I'm I'm firmly middle age now. Um, I, I've, I was kind of pretending that I, I was still young, but you know, not now I'm feeling like, yeah, I'm, I'm actually middle age. No, um, on Friday, I started taking <laughs> blood pressure medicine. So I have arrived. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, very good. Very good. All right. So why don't you start... Um, by telling us just a little bit more specifically about the restaurant industry uh, and why restaurants are struggling to attract and retain employees. We hear a lot about tech. We hear a lot about STEM, uh, even healthcare. Like there's these different industries that are always struggling to find good people and to keep them. Um, but maybe we don't talk as much about hospitality and hospitality and particularly restaurants. Uh, they're struggling too to find good people and to keep them around. Um, so tell us, in your experience, what that's looking like and why. Yeah. So uh, just to give a little bit of context on any of my comments today about restaurants, um, I don't run one, but I make restaurant software and we have uh, around probably 40,000 customers at this point. So I do get a, a bird's eye view of what's happening in a lot of them. So I'll share some context on what we see there and as well as some national stats. So 
Boy, looking at the restaurant industry, employment is crazy. It's the second or third largest employing industry in America. And they go through up and ups and downs. On a on a normal year, 70% turnover is pretty standard. And so, you know, you think about cycling through those employees, that's that's tough to to keep them, to train them, and then just have to do it all over again. In the last few years, as you can imagine, it was really tough, right? Uh, and the restaurant industry was the industry that lost the most jobs during the COVID pandemic. I think they, they lost at, at the early onset 6 million jobs, which was 27% of the overall job loss during the pandemic here in the U.S. So, I mean, the restaurant industry was hit very hard. And so it's really been this three-year journey to come back from it, you know, to rehire and and so it's it's been very interesting to see how that's gone down and then back up. And, and right now they've been on this hiring rampage. And like, for example, just January here, one in five jobs hired. You know, they just re- released the jobs report. It was a great jobs report in the country. One in five of those jobs was in the restaurant industry. And so um, it, it is really starting to hire a lot. But part of the tough thing there is because of how much turnover they have, they have to continually hire yeah, thank you for that context and some startling statistics that you threw out there as well. And it seems to me like part of the issue here is perhaps while the the economy has shifted and the labor market has shifted in recent decades, something that used to be seen by many as a legitimate career path has shifted away to something that's just kind of more of a short-term transitory kind of job, maybe while you're in school or that stepping stone to the next thing. Or I'm sure there are plenty of people that still use um, the restaurant industry for a career path. Uh, But it seems like that has has been reduced. And now it's more of like part-time work um, and and people just kind of doing it while they're in school. How, How does that mesh with what you're seeing and if that's accurate, uh, what what do you think organizations, what restaurant uh, leaders can do to encourage more of a career path mindset in their people as a means to attract and retain good people? Uh, it is true what you say there. I think it's big uh, mindset in, in the country here of, oh, I'll work at a restaurant for a little bit and then I'll get another job. But one thing, nine in 10 restaurant managers come from employees, you know, who joined in a different role. And and so I think one of the key things restaurants can do to change that mentality is share that and provide mentorship and work on an actual culture uh, in the restaurant instead of, you know, just treating it as this job where we kind of own you for a little bit and you come in and do the work. And and so actually try to have a culture and real benefits. And, and if they treat the employees as though this is a real job and they talk about it that way from the beginning, I, I think they have a much better chance Versus, you know, bring in these young kids and abuse them for a little bit by making them work really hard and uh, not giving them the shifts they want. You know, there's a lot of that that I think is the conception right now. Monetizing digital services since 2004. Boosting the entertainment industry by making digital content accessible for everyone. AWG. Where innovation meets monetization. Yeah, so this attitude of of just kind of chew them up, spit them out, use them while you have them, um, and it's it's part of like it seems to me like it's a bit of a, a perpetual downward spiral um, that needs to be disrupted. Because on the one hand, it's transitory; it, it's become it seems like it's become more and more transitory of an occupation. Um, people coming in short term, they're seeing it as a stepping stone to the next thing or whatever. Um, and so there, so employees aren't as loyal to the comp to the restaurant to the company. Um, they're they're more likely to to bolt if you know when things aren't going the way they they want, if they're not getting the pay they want, if they're not getting the shifts they want, etc. Uh, and then the employer is saying, "Well, look, I have these people that aren't committed to us at all. Why am I going to invest in them? Why am I going to pay them better? Why am I going to treat them better? Why am I going to invest in building a culture?" Uh, with them? Why am I going to train them more, et cetera? All the the investment pieces, they're like, well, why would I bother? Because they're just going to leave. And so they don't. And then that reinforces to the employees that, you know, the, my employer doesn't invest in me. Uh, they don't care. They're not committed to me. I'm not committed to them. It seems like it's a bit of a downward spiral. Um, and And I should add, it's not unique to restaurants. I mean, this 
we, we see the same phenomenon in pretty much any organization, organizations that focus on investing in their people, on ex- establishing a healthy culture, um, making it a place that people want to be, where they see an opportunity for growth. Those types of organizations, with, whether it's a restaurant or elsewhere, they tend to, to do a better job of attracting good people and keeping them. Uh, so it seems like it, it just makes sense that what you were saying would be a great approach uh, for restaurants, but then you have to disrupt it in the in the first step, right? You have to disrupt that downward spiral in order for for managers and for leaders to say, yeah, this is actually worth my time and energy to invest in these things that are going to take time and energy away from just the operations of the restaurant. Yeah, that's right. Uh, one of the things in, if we're talking restaurant industry specific, I'm happy to hop out too, but, but in the restaurant industry, minimum wage has been raised in a lot of places and looks like it will continue to. And so that is really changing the dynamic, probably in any industry where minimum wage exists, right? That that's one reason you really do want to disrupt that spiral and get high quality folks that stick around. Because if someone's coming in and you're going to pay them $22 an hour, you need a real employee, right? And, And who you can train up and is adding a lot of value. And so um, as, as you see that coming, I think it behooves the restaurants to invest some ahead of that to try to disrupt that that spiral and and try to step in and say, look at some of the things we've we've invested in for you. We are investing in you, and and it'll make it worth it because one way or another, I think they're going to end up paying those wages. Yeah, and communicating the investment is really important. Um, it it really isn't enough to just assume that your people are going to notice it. Uh, And especially if it's highly transitory right now, people are coming in and out constantly just because you had a team meeting, you know, a couple months ago where you highlighted, you know, the promotion of so-and-so who was a server, who's now a shift lead and that person who then became a man, you know, you can highlight these things, but guess what? Three months from now, you're going to have a lot of new people. Uh, So you have to do it repeatedly and uh, you have to have a communication strategy that allows you in a genuine and authentic way to share these things, to create the culture. And then you have to repeat, you have to keep doing it. Uh, You can't say, oh, I did that last year. We're good. I mean, that never works with culture anywhere, but it definitely doesn't work with culture when you have high turnover kind of environment. So if you want to disrupt the high turnover environment, uh, you're going to have to be over communicating uh, in the short term, at least. Uh, to make sure that people are getting those messages and recognizing when they come, like this is actually a viable option for me. This is something uh, that that I can earn a living wage, that I can, you know, pe- people who love interacting with people, being a server in a restaurant's a great gig. Um, you know, you can, it, depending on the restaurant, I mean, you can earn great tips in addition to the wage. Uh, you can interact with great people. Uh, it can be an energizing environment. Like there's a lot of positives as long as people are earning a living wage and being treated fairly with dignity and respect and, and invested in by their, their, their employer, you know, I, I think it can be a, a good viable option for people where they don't just feel like they have to settle or kind of be stuck in a, a, you know, quote unquote dead end job. That's never going to get them anywhere. I, I think that's the mentality that we need to try to shift. Yeah. Well, you're right. It, it, people who are energized by interpersonal interaction l- usually love the hospitality industry because they're interacting. You can serve people, you make them happy. And uh, so that that can be a real positive as long as you treat them well. And and so some of those things you can do are investing in, let's say, a learning management system. Like, for example, you know, we're, we're in the tech industry, but we we invested in a learning management system this past year. And within a few months, I didn't know if anyone was going to use it. Within a few months, 800 courses had been completed. And, and this wasn't mandatory. We just made it available. So. I think that's something you can do and really communicate it out that you have that. Invest in, for restaurants, invest in scheduling software, right? So that you get the right amount of employees there at the right time. And the mobile apps where they can communicate with each other, give them some control over what they're doing, right? By being able to swap shifts or ask for time off or try to get the best shifts. If you just settle into this clipboard and you write down, here's where everyone works, and then you just copy that every single week, you're going to end up with some of the people really disgruntled, right? And and so, yeah, some of those technologies, I think, can help people quite a bit. Yeah, so so using the systems and technologies uh, to assist in the personalization uh, and the, the, the employee experience of workers within restaurants is, is going to be important, just like it's important in any industry, in any sort of job. 
Uh, absolutely. Uh, the other thing that we're facing, and you've already alluded to this and, and talked specifically about it in terms of the pandemic, is uh, just the nature of burnout. So uh, certainly the the hospitality industry generally, the restaurants specifically, were really hard hit uh, employment-wise uh, during the pandemic. Now, much of that has come back. Um, but it's, it's, you know, we, we talk about frontline workers, like those people that were out interacting with people, even when, you know, we didn't have a vaccine and, uh, when people were more nervous about, uh, contracting COVID and, and those sorts of things, um, there, there is stress associated with that, right. And, and being in those customer facing kind of roles and those direct interaction type of roles, uh, and, and anyone who's worked in hospitality of the restaurant industry, you know, you may be energized by those interpersonal interactions, but it also means you're going to have some negative interactions that you have to deal with um, because you're going to have unhappy customers sometimes that you're going to try to, um, you know, fix their, their challenges and issues and make sure that they're happy. But sometimes you're the one that's getting yelled at or dealing with the drama, right? And all of that can lead to burnout. And especially if you don't feel like you're being compensated fairly, if you don't feel like you're being treated fairly, I mean, why would you put up with a negative workplace environment, a negative customer environment and not get paid well? Um, I, I mean, it, I just don't yeah. know how many people would want to do that, right? Right. I mean, you're you're right on that one. One saying I like sometimes ne- never wrestle with a pig because you both get dirty, but the pig likes it. Like jerks can really be draining. And there are some jerks out there, right, that are just they don't care how they're treating people at a restaurant. Uh, but but stepping out of just restaurants, this applies to them, but it applies to our business. It applies to other industries. I think one of the key things to help with burnout, I really have two main thoughts on that. One of them is autonomy, mastery, and purpose. People need those three things badly in their job. So there, there's the pay aspect, as we've talked about, and, and there's benefits. But autonomy, mastery, and purpose is this intrinsic value, right? And there's a number of great books that talk about that. But uh, if you can find ways to provide that to people, it adds as much or more value, uh, you know, than just a higher salary. Autonomy is the four T's of autonomy or autonomy, task, time, technique, and team. Can they control those four things or any part of it? Can you can you try to have them decide what time they work? You know, maybe they can say what shifts they want or who they're working, what team. Hey, I really have this buddy. Give us shifts together. There, there's things there that you can do to help them. And that really creates a positive feeling. And those type of feelings are what really prevent burnout on the mastery and the purpose side, I think we already talked some about mastery, which is gives them give them opportunities to learn and become expert at some things. People are proud of that. They they love to be an expert at something. And so give them opportunity for that. And then on purpose, help them to understand what the vision is of your organization, where you're going. And in the end, make it something that they're proud of, that they're proud to be a part of. And if you can do that, people are going to lean in. And all three of those things, I think, really help you to avoid some of the burnout. The one other aspect that um, is, I, I think that everyone, whether you're in a job that you feel like you can control or not, everyone should assess their role at least once a year. It's something that I do, uh, you know, as a CEO. It, it, it's a little different as a CEO as I got this role. And you say, well, what's your job? And I say, whatever makes the company successful, right? So that can continually change as we grow. So every year I make this quadrant, you know, great at it, not great at it and love it and don't love it. And so it makes these quadrants. And then I list out everything I do in my job. And I find out where it fits on the spectrum. Hey, if you're great at it, and you love it, keep doing that thing, right? Do more of it. Um, If you're great at it, but you don't love it, you got to be careful. Those are the things where you're going to grind and you can burn out after a while. You don't really enjoy it, but the company needs you to do it, right? That's take one for the team. You can't take one for the team forever, though. So uh, you have to start making a plan on those of how you can shift some of that off your plate. Um, not great at it and don't love it, quit doing those things, right? You're not helping anyone, yourself or the business with those. Uh, anyways, I, I could talk all around that, but yeah. but that's another thing that I think is important is to continually assess where you're at and then actually make plans for how you can improve that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and just to note and highlight that we're not saying that pay isn't important. Uh, we're saying you treat 
people with dignity and respect. You pay them a fair, equitable wage, right? Uh, and and as Dan Pink talks about, you take pay off the table, right? You pay them enough to take pay off the table. Once you do that, then you can focus on these other intrinsic aspects that actually are going to do more to drive motivation and satisfaction and performance than the wage itself. But if you don't pay people fairly, um, even if it's a perceived um, lack of fairness, if you don't pay people fairly or they don't feel like they're being paid fairly, it almost doesn't matter the other stuff that you're doing because they're still not going to be happy. Um, so pay them well, pay them a living wage, pay them fairly and equitably uh, and take it off the table. So now they can just do the work and now they can focus on these other intrinsic factors that are really going to drive high levels of performance. And it's those intrinsic factors that ultimately are going to make it more likely that they're going to recommend the company to their friends. Like, Hey, come work with me. This restaurant's awesome. Uh, it's so much fun. We, we all get along so well. We work together so well, et cetera. You know, so you, you get referrals, you get people bringing their, their friends in. Uh, people want to stick around because they're being paid good and they're, they're getting good pay. Uh, but it's a fun place. It's a place for growth. It's a, a, a place for advancement, a place, um, where they can develop themselves. And that's, that's the type of place that people want to be. And so there's still going to be some transitory aspects of certain industries and that's fine. But I think we're, we're not, um, relegated the, in the restaurant industry. Hospitality is not relegated to this like status of, you know, I'm just doing this until I can get something better. And that's kind of, it feels like where we're at. And I think we can do much better um, in, in, by focusing on many of the things we've been talking about. Yeah. Yeah. That's very valid on, on the pay side. I really think there's two levels you have to get to. And you, you mentioned those in, in your commentary. There's, you have to get to the base level where people are able to live, of course, but then there's actually another level you, you also have to get to, if you want to keep people in that is all about how they feel about their pay compared to their peers, compared to their coworkers. And, and you have to reach that level. And, and that's not always something that you can just put into a spreadsheet and it makes sense because it's what's in someone's head. And so part of that is you have to take the time to talk with people. You need to meet with them and review with them and ask them how they feel about it. And so some of it is that interpersonal connection to know if that's meeting that level of need for them. But yes, once you get the pay past those two levels, then I think it really digs on in on the culture side of it. Well, Tony, this has just been a really fun conversation. I know at the time I'm going to need to let you go here in just a minute, but before we wrap things up for today, I wanted to give you a chance to share with the audience how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, your team, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Great. Yeah, I, I think the best uh, way to get, get us is to go to restaurant365.com and check it out from all aspects. If your restaurant's Go there and look at the product and the solutions. If you're looking for a career in restaurant tech, then go on over to our careers page. We are always hiring. So, yeah, I would love for people to hop on there and, and check us out. Uh, Jonathan, really, really a pleasure to be on here. I, I appreciate you taking the time to let me chat for a little. As I think everyone who knows me knows, I can go on forever about things. So you did a good job of managing me here. <laughs> and uh, it, it, it really was a blast. So I hope that everyone out there who's hearing this um, is is thinking about whether you're uh, a boss, a manager, an employee, wherever you are in life, I hope that you're thinking about how do I make this place that I'm at work for me and how do I also make it better for those around me? And if everyone just has a little bit of that mentality, I think that you're, you're going to be in the right spot because wherever you are will yeah. become that. Yeah. Well said, Tony. This has been a pleasure. I encourage everyone to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Tony and his team can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page. And please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.